If you've ever wanted to make guns with super accurate hitbox detection, detect specific body parts of an entity, or scan for the presence of mobs in a very specific area, then you won't want to miss out on using this part of Minecraft's commands. Hey guys, welcome back to the Timber Forge. According to a recent poll, a lot of you guys don't use DX in your command creations, so I'll be using a variety of visuals and examples to give you guys a full explanation. I'll go over how it compares to distance detections, and how it could be used for precise hitbox collision detection. This underused command element could be used for so many creations from headshot detection to precise laser gates and mazes, which I'll show you later in this video. Make sure to stick around until the end because DX has some weird quirks and some unique power which you may not realize could be super helpful for your creations. First of all, what is DX? Well, DX is a part of target selectors that allows you to select entities within a certain volume, specifically within a box shape as opposed to a spherical radius like when using distance. What separates this from distance is not only the shape of the detection area, but also the fact that it detects for an intersection with any part of an entity's hitbox, not just the entity's true coordinates. If you don't know what this means, here's an illustration. The hitbox of an entity, which you could see with F3B, is the entire part of an entity that normally interacts with the environment, such as when being attacked or being pushed by pistons. The entity's coordinates are a single point in the world, illustrated by this red dot. The DX target selector will detect for an intersection with any part of this white box, while the distance target selector will only select entities whose origin coordinates, the red dot, are within the specified radius. DX allows for much more precise detection of any type of mob of any shape, since using distance alone doesn't account for the fact that larger mobs have more area that could be hit. Before I show you headshots or laser gates, I'll first need to explain the basics. Unlike distance, which uses a simple range, the DX command uses X, Y, and Z coordinates to specify the shape of a box in the X, Y, and Z direction relative to the point that the command is being run from. The catch is quite odd, so see this example. The DX selection always has a minimum size of one block, meaning that DX equals zero selects an area that is one block by one block by one block. If you do dx equals 0, dy equals 1, and dz equals 2, the size of the box is 1 by 2 by 3. Basically, just understand that stating dx equals 0 essentially creates a one block box, and any additional numbers above 0 are adding extensions to that default box. At first, dx seemed to be super helpful with its hitbox detection, but that one block minimum seems to really make it suck for any precise detection. But don't worry, I'll illustrate how to select for smaller regions and what you could use this for. I'll leave a link to Cloud Wolf's video where I first saw this concept when he used it specifically for raycasting. Also, while I will show some raycasting examples in this video, I will probably release another video specifically on implementing a full raycast system hopefully next week or so. The way that we get more precise detection using DX is by using two overlapping boxes and only selecting entities within the intersection zone of those boxes. By doing this, we have complete control over the shape of our intersection box, and we could detect for sizes smaller than the full block minimum. This means through raycasting, we could detect to see if our infinitely small bullet has intersected with any part of a large entity's hitbox. You could even manipulate the intersection zone into other shapes, like a long rod that is infinitely thin, for example if you wanted to make laser gates that destroyed projectiles. Here's the actual implementation for detecting entities that pass through a region smaller than a full block. First, create an execute as command that executes as any entities within the first full block specified by dx equals zero. This will scan a volume one block forwards in the x, y, and z directions. Then, position the function backwards by almost one full block in all three directions, and do the same scan again. By moving almost a full block in the opposite direction of the first scan, there will be a tiny corner of overlap. At this point, the function will only successfully complete if an entity's hitbox was in both boxes. For raycasting, you'll also want to reposition the command back to the original location and then run your result if the detection works. On screen is a super simple raycast example. Before I show you how we could use this to detect headshots, here's another simple but useful implementation for the DX hitbox detection. Let's say you're making laser gates in a puzzle map. 
then you want to show that only entities small enough to fit between the gaps would be allowed such as arrows, potions, or snowballs. Distance would only let you make detection areas the shape of a sphere, but we want to be able to make selections in the shape of a line. Using DX, we could first check for entities within a tall selection, that is 1 by 1 by 2, using DX and DZ values of 0 or default, and a DY value of 1. This detection area is a full block in width, so to make it more precise, we can add another identical detection block that slightly overlaps with the first one. By only killing entities that are in both selections, we are effectively scanning for entities whose hitboxes touch a thin rod with a width of 1 minus your offset value and height of 2. Just add some particles, make the detection kill entities and play a sound, repeat the command at spaced out intervals for multiple beams, and boom, you have a simple laser gate that only took a minimum of two commands. We can also detect specific parts of a body by utilizing both the distance target selector on top of the DX selector. By testing both intersection with any part of the hitbox and comparing that to the distance from the entity's true origin coordinates, we could essentially do like a janky bootleg version of triangulation onto the exact location of the entity we hit. Let's go back to our husk test subject. With its hitbox and position laid out as before, we could define a headshot as any intersection with the hitbox that is this far from the position coordinate, a chest shot that is an intersection with the hitbox within this range from the origin, and a foot shot as any intersection with the hitbox that is very close to the feet. The implementation is pretty simple. When your DX commands determine that an entity was hit, run a new function, I called it collide. From there, just run commands that detect if the entity is within the distance ranges that you chose, and you could run different commands depending on what you want to happen. A super common one is doing higher damage on headshots. The main issue with this body part detection is when detecting side-to-side -side body parts, for example arms, wings, or butts, since the rotation of the mob is not always consistent with the hitbox's rotation. That's why it's easier to just detect body parts that are different distances from the origin, such as the feet, chest, and head of a humanoid mob. Of course, there are more creative ways that you could try to pinpoint the locations of body parts such as calculating the distance from a secondary location relative to the origin, or by anchoring to the eyes and using the direction that a mob is looking as a general idea of its orientation, but you could basically cut up a mob hitbox into whatever different regions you want by using the distance detections. That's basically everything you need to know to get started using DX. Make sure you guys join the Discord if you have any questions, we have a huge community of people who are willing to help you out. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content, including that full Raycast video, which I will hopefully put out soon.